Hello and welcome to Aurelian University. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about the Latin alphabet. So if you're an English speaker, which I assume you are if you're using this video, you're pretty used to the Latin alphabet. Um, these are letters that we use in English. There are some differences, so you'll notice some things are missing, like there's no J. There's also no W or U in this list. Uh, and um, so we're going to go over them sort of letter by letter. Wheelox Latin, which I sort of encouraged you in the last video to follow, uh, gives a lot of rules about pronunciation, and I think I can simplify them a little bit. Some of the rules involve sort of theories on language change that I am not sure that I agree with, and then some of the other rules um, I think overcomplicate things unnecessarily. So we're going to go through these, and we're going to make them a little simpler. So first letter here is A, it's A, it'll be pronounced A, there's a long and a short version. Uh, they're not always marked whether it's long or short, but if it is marked you'll see a long line above the A, and that'll mean it's a long A. Just pronounce the long A longer than you pronounce the short A. For all these vowels here that I've underlined, um, Wheelox Latin gives, uh, for most of them, Wheelox Latin gives alternate actual uh, sounds that you're supposed to produce. It's not just a length difference. Uh, I disagree with the sort of historical take on that. I, I'm not sure that historically that's really correct, that they always had different sounds. And um, one of the reasons I think why Wheelox Latin does it is because for native English speakers, it's a little bit easier to hear differences in uh, vowel quality than vowel length. But just to simplify things, and because I think it's more historically correct, there's a long ah uh, and a short ah. Uh. B makes a B sound, always makes a B sound. C may always makes a K sound, unless you're uh, using Latin for Catholic sort of religious purposes, in which case before an I or a C, an I or an E it makes a CH sound. Uh, we will not be using that pronunciation in these videos, I won't be, but feel free if you're using this for not classical Latin purposes. D makes a DUH sound, E makes an A sound. Again, Wheelox Latin gives alternate long and short pronunciations. In these videos, long A will be A, short A will be A. F, always an F sound. G, sort of like C, always a G sound, unless you're using this for ecclesiastical Latin purposes, in which case it'll be J before an I or an E. Again, not in these videos, we won't be doing that. H makes a H sound. Wheelox Latin says to make it uh, less pronounced. Um, Feel free to do that if you if you wish. I makes an E sound, long eyes E, short eyes E. Um, and this also takes place of the J. So there's no J in classical Latin that was invented later to differentiate between consonantal I and vocalic I. Consonantal I in uh, originally was a Y yes sound, which is just sort of a really short E sound. So this can also make a a y sound, like we use Y for in, in modern English. K makes a K sound. Um, it's mostly used for loan words from Greek because Latin had its own uh, its own letter for this. L makes a L sound, M makes a M sound, N makes a N sound. O makes an O sound, long O, short O. Uh, and you should be careful not to make this O. You should make it O but it's not a big deal. Uh, so essentially don't put a W at the end of it. P makes a P sound, Q makes a uh, K sound, but it's always followed by a, a V or uh, a U in some text, so a Q sound. And theoretically, historically, this was actually slightly different than the C sound, but um, we're not really sure how long or, or if for very long that was true, so. We'll just make it a K sound. R makes a R sound. Two R's makes a R sound, like a trilled Spanish R. Um, S makes a S sound, as you can imagine. T makes a T sound. Um, but in English, sometimes we turn this into a SH sound. In Latin, that's not the case. It's always a T. Uh, v makes a W sound in classical Latin later. And in sort of ecclesiastical Latin, it'll make a V sound. Use whatever you like in these videos. I'm going to be using the classical pronunciation. X makes a X sound. E was probably um, uh, the Greek sound. Well, it was the Greek sound E. Um, it only occurs really in Greek loanwords in Latin. So long E, short E, 
sort of like the U umlaut in German or the Y in, in French. So uh, some people just sort of like to make this an U sound, some people like to make it an I sound if they have trouble with that vowel quality, but the correct way to do it would be U and then Z makes a Z sound. And this was uh, used a lot for loan words from Greek also. So that makes things a little bit simpler. We Lux Latin will throw in some additional tips, like for example, B when it's followed by S will be pronounced like a P. So urbs uh, would be incorrect. Urbs, the word for city, would be correct. So it's spelled uh, V-R-B-S. It would be pronounced like a P though. In reality though, in rapid speech, as long as you're not turning the S into a Z, you're, you're gonna say it as a P. So that, that's, that's why I don't throw in some of those rules. Also, Wheelux Latin talks about some diphthongs, so certain combinations of letters that together, uh, uh, vowels that together are pronounced slightly differently. I'll have another video on that, but I think I can simplify that quite a bit too, because um, honestly, I think Wheelux Latin makes it a little bit more complicated than it has to be.